Hi, Dr. LaFrance again, Friday 17th of April in, this, in these memorable times. I'm trying to improve a little bit. My background is still awful, but I'm trying to find light that makes sense in my uh, house. Uh, I'm also trying to put a few slides. I don't know if it has appeared, will appear, or, or is appearing now. Uh, basically, it's a kind of summary of what I'm going to talk about today. First, to start with, let's get rid of the stuff that I'm going to talk only about for about a minute. Long-term care. Long-term care will be in the news a lot in the next few days. I pity them. I don't know what they're going to be able to do about it. Probably good intentions, not much result. Number two, agriculture. Agriculture is going to be a big problem in the news very soon. Uh, getting the workers, usually from Mexico, to come in and pick up our, our, stuff, our food. We're crazy. We want to bring them. We want to put them four days in, uh, in isolation. That doesn't make sense. It's an incubator. Where they're going to be together it doesn't make sense send them in the field eight feet apart working that's easy if you have to isolate them instead of building them quarters these people don't worry they're used to hardship give them each a tent build a big carport in case it rains that's make more sense to uh, separate them than to put them in a in one place number three business laws of nature well there is laws in business too now we're giving money to every business so they don't fail. That's okay for 90% of the business, but 10% of the business on any given year do fail. And 10% of workers do lose their job and get reorganized. That's the laws of business again. Now, we're going to make sure that no business fails. Those 10% of businesses that would have failed are not going to fail, which is not a good thing. Okay, out of the other 90, how do you pick up the 90 from the 10? I don't know. Uh, the revolutions to come. People are coming out in the street in some places in the state saying, we want to work. Three-hour lineup in Houston, we want food. There'll be problems. Um, Ted Russ, the World Health Organization, Trump, and TAN in our uh, country. Big thing, I'd like to talk about that. Complex. Don't blame Trump right away for not having put the, uh, get, stop the money to uh, the World Health Organization. Uh, last thing on my list, why the world should have frozen in mid-90s? Well, I'm a conservative by nature and conservative politically. But I, there's a, some people that I loved in the, in the Liberal Party. For example, starting with the people I loathe, the true Trudeau, starting with his father, the arrogant narcissist. Trudeau, well-intentioned, not a bad guy, little, you know, drama teacher, what can you do? Um, one guy I really like was Paul Martin. Paul Martin is the architect behind Jean Chrétien back in the early 90s. When the first Trudeau had really almost bankrupt our country, we were having something like 20% of, of the budget going just to pay the interest on the debt. He put things back in order. Sure, it's always bad time in the conservative. We're sensible. We bring things back to normal, common sense. So in the mid 90s, if the world would have stopped, we were okay. Nothing's perfect. I mean, we're not animals anymore. We don't have to spend every waking hour just picking food. You know, we're lucky. We don't have to worry much about roof and food, don't we? as a general rule in this country. So we were okay. And then the things started to happen. Too much of a good thing. The law diminishing return. We started to get in debt and debt and debt again. Debt is our national emergency now, not the COVID. There's debt everywhere. We have the highest household debt in the country, in, in the world. Our governments at all, uh, not all level, the federal and provincial are in the red tremendously. It doesn't make sense anymore. It's all fake money everywhere. Even the city of Ottawa, which I, to my surprise, found out they had one point something billion in reserve. They say it's not enough. They're going to they're gonna ask the province to also go in debt. So now we're going to become like the states. Detroit went bankrupt. Why not Ottawa next? Okay, okay. So let's forget about that. I'm going to get into basically what I want to talk about today. It's much more general. I want to talk about uh, education as opposed to instruction. Um, instruction is what you get in school, I think. Edu education is what you do on your own. For example, I'm a doctor. I got very knowledgeable in all kinds of other things. When I started in practice, I had a diploma on my wall. It wasn't about medicine. It was about welding. I got my welding papers. I was impressed by that, okay? Because it wasn't my field. I also had a, another thing. I won a photographic contest in Ottawa because I did that for a living, trying to feed my kids when I was in medicine. So these were the things 
that I did on my own, not really as part of my work or my instruction in school. So uh, you, you gotta, if you want an education, you do it yourself. And the answer is books, books, and more books. Okay, today the things, the, the things have changed a little bit. A lot, I should say, because the web pretty well replaced encyclopedias, I would say. Encyclopedias were always like a few years behind, the same as your GPS is behind because new streets happen, etc. So now Wikipedia, for example, every time they send me a little, please support us, I send them 10, 25 bucks, two, three times a year. It's worth it. It's cheaper than buying the old Encyclopedia Britannica, and you can have access to any facts you want right there. And it's open source, and most of the sources are pretty good. They're not censored like Facebook or Google, and that's a good thing, okay? Uh, they do say, if you look again at Tedros, for example, the World Health Organization, they will tell you about the controversies with him. Not only, uh, you know, like, uh, like Facebook and Google would do. Uh, books, now. Also, uh, once you finish with books, it's like textbooks, but you also need periodicals. You, you gotta keep up with the times. And you can't be on the internet all the time. As far as I'm concerned, my number one periodical is The Economist. It's a misnomer. It's not all about economy. It's about everything. Geopolitics, politics, uh, there's book reviews at the end. It's the number one periodical in the world. If you're going to have one thing in the world, that's what you need. Second best is Times in the States. Third best is McLean's in Canada. Sorry, Canada, but The Economist eclipses you by a mile. Uh, also, newspaper. I read newspaper. It's a source of information. You take what you want, you make your own deductions. That's interesting, that's what you should do. Uh, I've learned everything in books. I wasn't very good to go to school. I've always been a hyper person and sitting in school for an, uh, an hour for a lecture while I could learn much faster in a book and make summaries of it, that's what I did. I didn't go to lectures. Even in medicine, I didn't go to lectures. I just, simple, wanna learn anatomy? Hey, simple. You got a big book that thick, it's there. Gray's Anatomy, why, why should you want anything else? It doesn't matter what the teacher says. Whatever he says is what's in the book. Learn the book, make a synopsis of the book, go to the exam and write your, your exam, okay? Same with the histology or um, internal medicine, Harrison, you know, you read the book, the book, the book. Um, in the early, uh, 80s, late 70s or early 80s, I became a pilot. Easy to get your license. But I also got my instrument rating. That's difficult. Fly like the big guys in the, in the clouds and land by instruments only. I, I got there. And uh, I got there with what? You'll know soon. Every, most people would take a course, a course would pay for it and everything and present themselves at the exam. I presented the exam, got 93%. Oh, the teacher said, well, no, sorry, the examiner said, which, which school did you go to? Got my book out, showed him the book. That's what I learned. You don't have to have teaching. You can educate yourself. It's simple. You just have to take the time, be inquisitive, and do what you have to do. Uh, also, Aesop, A-E-S-O-P. It was a Greek uh, about 500 years before Christ who wrote 258 fables. I hope I have the right word. He was a fabulist. He was making fables, examples with animals that mimic what happens in life. If you... Still can go back, I put one about uh, a week ago, two weeks ago, about the ant and the grasshopper. It comes from The Economist again. I always post the little articles from The Economist with the underlying segments that I think are important. You could go back to it if you look, you type my name and go to Facebook, you'll probably see it. Uh, this world is not common sense like has been in most of history. It's not the ant that is winning anymore, it's the grasshopper. It doesn't matter if you try to be frugal like I was and accumulate your time, think of the future. You have to be immature today. You have to go in debt. You have to go in debt further. That's what they want you to do. I'm the bad guy because I'm not spending. I'm saving. Isn't that horrible? You got to spend. You got to be a economy rule. The whole thing is crazy. It doesn't make sense anymore. So maybe you should look at, at, at some of these fables, especially the one about the ant and the grasshopper. I see close to 10 minutes. I'm trying to keep them down to 12 minutes. 
So um, I, uh, I made a, a slide of the books that I think have changed my life and maybe are very important. I hope the slide comes up. If it doesn't, it's basically that. The books, and I don't have the list with me. But I think if I remember my slide, the fourth turning is very important by an economist and an historian, Strauss and Au. This book talks about the repetition in history, which basically are 80 plus year, which is the life of a person plus or minus, that includes four generations, about 20 years. And every generation changes. And every 80 years, there is big changes in the fourth turning. And we are in the fourth turn now. So uh, expect big changes. <laughs> they will happen. They were going to happen. They were destined to happen. And they are happening. Uh, uh, another book which everybody knows now, it's called Sapiens. Uh, there's two others, uh, Homo Deus and Lessons of the 21st Century by Noah Arari, uh, uh, a Jewish author. And, um, okay, a book that changed, that started me on my education was Milton Friedman, a book about 1975 or so about free to choose. I remember buying about five of these books, underlining them and giving them to my friends and said, I'm giving them to you with only one condition. You read it, I hope. And then number two, you give it to somebody else. I really don't know what happened. Maybe they just garbaged them after I left. I don't know. But it's a book that really got me on my, my trip to uh, really understand economy, politics, etc. By the way, this Friedman was also a, an advisor to Ronald Reagan, Margaret Thatcher. And he also kind of laid to rest the Keynesian theories that are still being used, but... Uh, but Milton, uh, not Milton, anyway, Keynes, uh, whatever his first name was, was a very influential economist back in the uh, 20s and 30s. So, uh, again, 11 minutes, I think I will quit. I don't know where I go tomorrow. I have always a flight of ideas in my head as to what to say, and I just try to say as much as I can within 12 minutes. Okay. I'll come back tomorrow and try to be as organized as I can, but it's not really my forte, so bye for now. Remember, maybe, uh, some people will have asked me to be friend on Facebook. Unfortunately, it's not that I don't like you, but it's just that there'll be too many friends, and then it gets too complicated. I like to keep Facebook fairly for friends and what I want to say, but if you want to subscribe to my channel, I, I, I like that, and I hope the way I see it, that you could put comments, and I will try to respond to comments there if you subscribe to that. But unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to accept too many multitude of requests for friends on Facebook. I hope you understand. Thank you for today. Bye-bye.